The federal government says its six-year-old whistleblower's policy has performed poorly and lost steam. It will now send a new bill to the National Assembly to strengthen the fight against corruption and protect whistleblowers. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, announced this after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshinbajo. The minister also said the council approved a total of 9.24 billion naira for the 2022-2023 group life insurance cover for federal public servants. The government also approved the finance bill 2022 that is designed to support the implementation of the 2023 budget. Well, Arise News Analyst and Human Rights Lawyer Frank Tete joins us now to take a look at the whistleblowers draft uh, good to see you again on news night as always thanks for joining us now what difference really will this new whistleblower bill make and more importantly do we even know why the first one failed the, that of 2016 why did it fail a lot of reasons right. clear reasons it was bound to fail if it was it was going to last long then it was meant to fail it wasn't meant to last long. It was a temporary. It was supposed to be a temporary measure. Uh, the the president at that time had reading to the uh, to become president on the basis of the war against corruption, mm -hmm. and so some innovative and uh, very quick uh, fix auto have been employed, and that was how the presidential initiative on continuous audit. Uh, was uh, embarked on this whistleblower policy, which was seemed well thought out because a whole lot of uncertainties uh, were associated with it. Uh, for example, and it was very laughable, as a practicing lawyer, I've mm. seen many people complain to me to come to my office and say, look, we were the one responsible for that fine, find, that huge find. And then they said, when we told them, they, they took all the details from us, and then suddenly they came back and told us that someone else had come before the, for us. And wow. the, the, you know, yeah, but, but, but I think there was more to that because uh, I actually attended, I was a speaker at an event by the African Center for in, in Information and, uh, and Literacy, AFRISMAIL, where we, we, other speakers, including Femi Falana, had complained that uh, the, the presidential audit, uh, presidential initi initiative on continuous audit that was responsible for that, uh, implementing that policy, mm -hmm. wasn't willing to go after persons who, who reported cases to it. And then how would public policy actually succeed in trying to give, incentivize uh, things like disloyalty and snitching and then betray uh, betrayal of uh, uh, one's loyalists of uh, servants or masters. And that was what's happening. I mean, but what very discouraging was right. the case of Andrew Yakubu, for example, former uh, uh, general managing director of the NNPC, mm -hmm. who was just mm -hmm. on that post for two years. And then he had about $9.6 million stashed in Very one, it was, no, no, in it's somewhere in around in the, the, the Kaduna. House in Kaduna. Kaduna. And then yeah. it turned out that, he, you know, when eventually he went to court, he was taken to court, the FC took him to court, and then went up to the uh, court upstairs, court of appeal, he was found uh, innocent, he was discharged. So what would have happened to the, to the whistleblower? whistleblower? So, you know, the whistleblowers were often complaining that they thought the, the very first time they would just uh, give, us this, give, this, give out this tip off and then they expect the money to come. Forgetting that this is Nigeria where law is supposed to work to the extent that every person that is accused of any offense whatsoever is presumed innocent. So okay. why would the EFCC or the ICPC or any law enforcement agent for that matter just, uh, you know, call, see money somewhere and then begin to appropriate it and say, oh, whistleblower, come and take your 5% and then if it's over 1 billion fined, come and take your 2.5 percent there was another major complaint that you couldn't ask public servants i mean civil servants in the federal ministry of finance whistleblowers. To, no 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 to preside to manage a whistleblower policy you say look who is going to be reported we're supposed to have whistleblowers blowing whistle on those guys in the in the ministry so suddenly they're not going to manage it how do you expect civil servants to manage it and then it will succeed. Mm -hmm. So then those were the then submissions that were made. Then where is it? it? It was like that law was even uh, there. It wasn't the a law, it was the policy. Arrival, yeah. And uh, with then where is the um, position of the Auditor General? 
of the Federation. Those people in the audit room, you know, if you're creating a whistleblower's policy, these are the people who are supposed to do the financial checks and balance. You know, no, no, the principle of audit may be different, not necessarily <coughs> anti-corruption, but main compliance to uh, financial regulations. Yeah, it's what and I'm saying. And the and moment it is actually they don't what comply you give to, it, to the auditor then, that yeah. he actually uses, and then he makes a report, he gives his report to the president mm -hmm. with regards to compliance and non-compliance and the things can take. So the auditor general can actually be excused. But we're talking about anti-corruption policy of this of a government which is whistleblower it failed for many reasons you know the, the, the honorable minister of finance in her submission was referring to the fact that it may have failed because whistleblowers were not protected enough that's not true nigerians are daring and they, they're but were they people. protected enough where really? they, they, were they at risk in the first place because you saw <laughs> i saw i i saw whistleblowers and they willing to, uh, to come on air willing to make politicians say that find i was the one that was responsible in fact I had cases you know, that they were, is where those whistleblowers presumably wanted to be in court to argue that they were the ones that gave that information that led to such and such a fine, and that they are expecting that five percent. And somehow, somehow, the people operating the the the, 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 policy. the, the policy were corrupt themselves, and then there were a lot of complaints. So again, Nigerians are not those kind of persons that will all really want to trade off their brother or sister or their big boss because of money, of unless they are disgruntled. Well, uh, hmm. was that uh, could that be said to be the case of the Accountant General of the Federation with over 90 billion that EFCC has recovered a third of that amount and uh, the chairman of EFCC is saying that hey, look, we can't be compromised. Nobody. Yeah, I know, but, but like, give it, give it, give free. it to EFCC and particularly this present EFCC. It's doing marvelously well. Uh, it's not, uh, and it's doing it quite, uh, quietly without all the fanfare of uh, trying to get some media hype all the time. So I think this quiet achievement on the part of the EFCC, it's commendable. But there is a but. We should take What's a look at you, you know no no I, I think we should move beyond this idea of whistleblowing it probably won't work but we should talk about you know preventive corruption I mean let's prevent corruption mm -hmm. you know let's not let's not have ICPC EFCC and all of these law enforcement uh, agencies together and then we sit back and allow one man to misappropriate 109 billion naira and we've failed. Yes, so the, all there's the need to change the system itself yes. that allows for yes. people to, you know, for uh, one man. Yeah, we need serious compliance to financial regulations, and then yeah. there needs to be clear cut, uh, you, you know, policy that enhances. Uh, transparency that doesn't happen you see this is a where is, is that a, supposed to even start from i think it's a clear indictment on our public service entirely when you can't find a situation where some group of persons will sit down and just you know misappropriate corner that kind of money into their own private uh, pockets. You know, so let's hope that um, our uh, prosecutorial agencies will act in such a manner that will now make actual accomplices to now come out and say, hey, we were part of those who stole that money. And uh, so and so, this guy got this and this guy. And we had that case okay. in the case of Musulio Mus Banikoro, who actually came out and said, hey, you know, I worked with the former NSA, uh, 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 Samba Dasuki, and we got, I got actually, uh, you know, facilitated Facilitated 2.2 billion uh, transfer to Ayo Farashi. He went to court to say that. And then, we, uh, you know, Nigerians need to be kept abreast with all of these. These are things that happened just here in 2019. So, it, it, it's such a matter. How did Obanikoro turn around to move against his own party, man? These are prosecutorial, uh, you know, skills that can be used when you say, come, come, if you, we offer you this, you can keep a part of this, and uh, you may not go to jail, but tell us the whole truth. And yeah, then but we can I wonder nail how the rest. that will really deal a, a big blow on corruption at the end of the day. But Zainab Ahmed, the finance minister, says this particular new. Uh, whistleblower bill, w you know, w comes with a provision right. to ensure alignment with the Evidence Act. Help us understand exactly what You know, it is difficult. First and foremost, it may be, if it is going to operate on the old regime of trying to appropriate the money before uh, the, 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 the suspect is actually taking the court, it may not work. It will be counterproductive. It will be against the provisions of Section 36 of the Constitution. On the other hand, generally, the Evidence, evidence Act is a very technical uh, piece of legislation. You can't, uh, you know, how did you 
get the information. The reason, the reason, and the, in the case of Andrew Yakubu, the court, the April court, threw away the case of the EFCC, was that all of the monies, the 9.6 billion uh, that was actually recovered from uh, uh, Yakubu's home, mm -hmm. was not tendered in court. And Yakubu went ahead to say that, look, that was his money, and that after he retired, people had pity on him for being GMD of N NMPC for two years, and then started dashing him money. <laughs> and then he had up to 9.6 um, million in his, uh, in his bedroom. So and then the court said, I, I don't know the details of whether the FCC gave it back his money or the FCC went to the Supreme Court on that. But mm -hmm. you see, how then do you now, you know, apply, you know, such kind read, of prosecutorial, I, I, I'm you, to read Christians you know, mind. yeah, I, I was just, I was just going to come in, you know, and uh, look at the issue of not just whistleblowing, misappropriation and open frauds, like we've seen in the 2023 budget by the humanitarian ministry, where over 250 billion Naira inserted, said to have been inserted into its budget meant for defense purposes. Or better still, padded. padded. How, do you, how do you reconcile? You see, that's why I talked about the office of the Auditor General. It is critical here. Because if there are anomalies like this, after each financial year, they should be able to point out and say, this and this had not, you know, been uh, appropriated uh, to the rules. Femi Fallon and bemoaned the situation where there is lack of political will on the part of the presidency, on the part of uh, the, the federal government to prosecute or to deal with these matters head on. It appears that this report only come out for, for sensational purposes in, uh, and then Nigerians are not tired because they've, got, they've gotten used to them without anything coming out of them. So it's important that when these figures are mentioned, we shouldn't even actually be talking about whistleblowers. Why would you be talking about whistleblowers? Why should we expect that people should just voluntarily give up information even though it's a constitutional duty for of every citizen to assist yeah. law enforcement agents you, you know, to, 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 to bust crimes? But and but is why, and I reiterate this, why is it that we have all of these massive structures, whether ICPC, EFCC, and all of this, you know, and they are unable to prevent corruption, especially the police. We think that they are there to just watch and wait for people to disgruntle the even elements to the, write, write banking, petitions. Even in the yes, banking system. You know, we have the NFIU mm. and all of these who should actually, who are persons there who are paid, who earn salaries fat salaries to report these things they don't and then you expect one driver that is angry because he's, he's living he's, he's seeing his boss living large and he's earning pittances and then he goes to report yeah that, that's not the way of nigerians really they have a nigerians if you look at Niger the culture of Niger i'm not defending corruption neither might but you need to understand the culture it is not the way of nigeria to actually pull the rug off his brother who is succeeding they won't do that especially if he's expecting that his brother will give him some Exactly. So <laughs> they, they, yeah, how can the policy okay. succeed if he's expecting that somebody who is angry you will be angry enough to say, okay, let me go and leak information about that. That's what they call party. No, it can't that's work. what they call party party situation here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks we'll so very much. Uh, <laughs> Frank Tetti, I rise news analyst. My pleasure.